Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to Telling Queer History annual fundraiser. Uh, fast friends, and you have me, your fasting friend, Blair Imani, because it's almost Ramadan, and I am myself a queer Muslim. So, so that we know accessibility is key. We have ASL interpreters, uh, we have live transcription, and there are instructions about how to pin the interpreters uh, that are available on the opening slide. So if we can get that up, then I can read that out. Fantastic. There we go. So uh, you can turn on your closed captions. You should see CC at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If not, use the directions for computers or phones uh, linked here. And then there are two ASL interpreters uh, and they'll be doing an excellent job. You can pin them by clicking the three blue dots in the upper right corner of their pictures. Also, Everyone, please do add your uh, display name uh, and your pronouns as you'd like to be represented. I'm MC Blair Imani, uh, user of she, her pronouns. Keep in mind, there will also be a silent auction. We had a little bit of a hiccup with the auction last night. It is all sorted thanks to fearless leader RJ getting that sorted out. Um, and let's go through, oh, I should probably introduce myself. Then we'll talk about the schedule events and get in, get things rolling. So. My name is Blair Armani. I'm an author, educator, historian, influencer, and now MC. I generally love to cosplay as Elton John, thus the outfit. Um, and I very much care about making space for queer youth, queer elders, cross-generationally, which is why I'm MCing tonight. I'm also on the board of the Tegan and Sarah Foundation, which is how I was connected with Telling Queer History. Um, and so you'll hear about some great things uh, coming up from that collaboration. Uh, without further ado, you will meet the Telling Queer History Board. We will have a land acknowledgement to really, uh, you know, pay homage to the peoples who came before us and still coexist with us, as well as a racial justice acknowledgement as Minnesota uh, is the site of quite a bit of racial trauma. Uh, you'll hear stories from me, Venus DeMars, Miko Blaze, and all throughout you will be helping to raise funds for Telling Queer History through the silent auction, through donation links to keep this amazing work going. So, if we can have the Telling Queer History Board introduce yourselves with your names, your pronouns, how long you've been on the board, and a single fun fact. Make sure that fact is fun. <laughs> Let's get it rolling. Hi, thank you, Blair. Thank you so much. I'm so excited that you're hosting today. Um, I'm David Lawrence. My pronouns are he, him. I've been on the board a little over a year, going up almost hitting my second year coming up this fall. Um, and a fun fact about myself is something I'm looking forward to this summer is if everything works out well, going on some hikes in uh, Colorado on a little road trip out there. So looking forward to that. And I'll pass it off to Rebecca. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Rebecca Aylesworth. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am the chair of the Telling Queer History Board, and I've been part of Telling Queer History. I just looked this morning and I think it's seven years, which sounds absurd, but I think that's correct. Um, a fun fact about me is that I um, adopted a pandemic kitten. Her name is Glinda, like Glinda the Good Witch from The Wizard of Oz. Um, Glinda may or may not make an appearance today here on Zoom, but she has been doing great at keeping me company during COVID in my, in my house here. I am going to pass the virtual mic over to Megan. Okay, um, my name is Megan Lafferty, and I am um, an, a board member of the, what am I, on <laughs> the board, the secretary uh, of the board, and um, I've, I started, I think, like, within six months of Rebecca Aylesworth starting on the board, so uh, we've both been with Telling Queer History for kind of a while. I uh, use she, her pronouns, and uh, I don't know, a fun fact is I'm really hoping to go see family in North and South Carolina uh, with over the summer, so <laughs> with uh, now that uh, we're getting vaccinated, so I'm super excited for that. Uh, passing on to, who am I passing on to? Joe, sorry. Hey everyone, thanks Megan. Um, I'm Joe Herrera, they, them pronouns. Um, I've been with Telling Queer, His Queer History for a couple of years now as a volunteer, but last year joined the board officially, um, and it's super exciting. Um, fun fact about me, I am in a fairly small apartment with 
three cats, a dog, and a rabbit. Uh, two of my five zoo animals are next to me, so hopefully they'll make an appearance. And I'm going to pass it on to Pat. Thanks, Joe. I'm Pat Nelson, and I've been on the TQH board for almost one year. And a fun fact for me is that I love amateur radio. I love being a ham without eating ham at all. <laughs> so I believe there's one more person. I believe that would be me. Yes. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Lawrence, also known as RJ. And I'm the founder and executive director of Telling Queer History. So, um, and I'm pretty comfortable in all the pronouns, really loving being uh, referred to as they, them these days. And my fun fact is that I am very similar to Tegan in that I also have a twin sister named Sarah, but she has no H. My, my Sarah has an H. Beautiful. I think that is the entire board. Thank you all so much for introducing yourselves. And next, we're going to get a sense of what we are fundraising for uh, with Pat, who will come in and read the mission and vision uh, of Telling Queer History. Also, while we were doing some introductions, I took a look at the silent auction. Y'all definitely want to get your bids on. So do that before I do, or we both can. Let's get those bids up. All right, let's read that, that mission. Thanks, Blair. Uh, Megan could get it on screen, please, so that everybody can share in this. Thank you so much. Our vision, we envision an intersectional LGBTQ plus community ded dedicated to authentic conversations that strengthen a sense of belonging, connection, agency, and hope, where all voices are heard, valued, and respected. Our mission, the mission of telling queer history is to connect lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer plus people across generations and identities through storytelling gatherings, which bring communities together to foster compassion, empathy, and healing. And with that, I'll pass that on to David. Thank you, Pat. Hey, David, gonna... I'm gonna interrupt you for just a minute. Sure. Um, we just need to get some accessibility stuff set up. Mm -hmm. um, someone is having trouble painting both the interpreters and the speakers. So I wanna make sure they have what they need before we keep going. It may help if the slide is down. Yeah. And Lily, the two interpreters are Alex and Amber, and I'll put that in the chat for you. And just as another reminder, while we're getting that set up, that we also have the live captioning or live transcription services as well. I utilize those, helps to keep me uh, on track. Thank you all for your patience and make sure to go ahead and check out that silent auction. You only have an hour, less than an hour. Um, I think just transparent moment, this is how we make sure everyone can access this. So we're gonna try, I'm gonna ask our event planner, Jen, to just spotlight the interpreter um, in the moment so then uh, the multi-pin was not working, so. Right now, Amber is spotlighted. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we can make that work. Uh... For those who need multi-pin, um, I am able to enable it, so I just need to know who it is. Yeah, they can chat, Joe. I put that in the chat as well.
So I am right now able to see, I'm gonna just quick share the mission screen again to see if that will affect how you're seeing your, um, who's been pinned. See if that helps you. So from my view, I have uh, Amber is currently at the top of my list for being pinned. I don't have access to multi-pin, but I don't necessarily need that. So whomever oh. needs that, just make sure you push the, or talk, send Joe a private text or private chat. Looks like we got an all clear from our audience. All right, uh, David, please take it away. Thank you all so much for your patience. Yes, of course, thank you. All right, I'm gonna read our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land on which telling queer history exists near the Bedote or the confluence of the Mississippi and Minnesota rivers is stolen land. Minnesota is the ancestral home of the Dakota people who still exist and are working to heal from the harms of colonization and attempted genocide by European colonizers. Let's reflect on the ways that non-natives benefit from that past and present history, that pat, sorry, benefit from that past and present history of colonization. Let's take a moment of silence for their, for the lives lost and commit to advancing indigenous sovereignty. Thank you so much for that, David. And we also have a link available so that you can learn the land that uh, you reside on if you're not uh, yet aware of it. Um, so that we can commit really holistically to uplifting all queer voices, uh, including individuals who uh, are more directly harmed by European colonization. That said, uh, telling queer history is based in Minnesota. Uh, and Minnesota has been the site of racial trauma on a national scale, um, not only over this past year, but throughout its existence, whether it's indigenous harm or harm against black people. As myself, a black woman um, and you know, retired member of the Black Lives Matter movement, though you don't truly retire from that work, um, I want to acknowledge uh, the trauma surrounding the Derek Chauvin trial, the trauma surrounding uh, the horrific murder of uh, George Floyd and all peoples known and unknown who have been harmed by uh, racist violence. And so as we commit to indigenous sovereignty, we also commit to racial justice and the upliftment of racialized people, uh, BIPOC individuals. Thank you so much for that. Now we will hear from, again, our leader, uh, RJ. So we will go ahead and see that on screen. Hi, welcome to Fast Friends 2021. We made it. I'm Rebecca Lawrence, the founder and executive director of Telling Queer History. I'm addressing you today from a pre-recorded video as I recover from a concussion. So thank you, Jeff from Studio 51 for helping edit this video. The power of storytelling changed the history of our state and I think our country in 2012 when thousands of volunteers across the state of Minnesota called strangers within our state to talk of love and build a system of empathy that changed hearts, minds, votes, and eventually laws. I learned a lot from volunteering with that campaign that I have used to build telling queer history. I also noticed whose stories were not being told as part of that campaign. My queer community, a mix of POC, trans, gender nonconforming, and low income folks were struggling just to survive. We did not want or have access to marriage rights at that time. And there was not a space for these two groups to connect even though the outside world lumped us all as one giant LGBTQ rainbow community, that was not our lived experience. We knew we were being divided by all the systems that try to oppress us. 
We needed more intergenerational spaces and we needed to make sure that our LGBTQ history was recorded outside of just San Francisco and New York City. We knew we had history here. In 2013, I met Scott Artley. He helped me shape the first Telling Queer History event and it was beautiful. People ages 17 to 70 showed up at Madame of the Arts and shared in an, a beautiful, authentic, vulnerable way. It was exactly what I had dreamed of. Since then, we have featured over 90 storytellers and 44 themed gatherings. Our events are ASL interpreted, all ages, substance free, donation based, and now that they're virtual, live captioned. When we gather in person, we provide free childcare, gender neutral bathrooms, and low allergen food. These are just some of the ways our community has taught us and help us to care for each other when we gather. In January 2020, I filed the 501c3 paperwork, turning Telling Queer History into a nonprofit because we wanted to build something beyond the small and mighty group that has put on these events for almost eight years. We wanted this to last and grow, and it is growing, and it's sustaining those who contribute to it, thanks to all of you and so many more. The world is full of people who don't want to see us and don't want to hear our stories. They live in denial or embrace white supremacy and other systems that try to harm us. I believe in my heart that another world is possible. Telling queer history is built around that belief. We are building a space where we are seen, where our stories are cherished, recorded, and truly heard. The things we have learned from our elders are being incorporated into our actions. Telling queer history is a place where your humanity is celebrated and seen, where our differences are celebrated. We are building connections across gender, identity, race, class, ability, and all the things that you are. And we need all of you. We need all the gifts that you can use to build this caring world, this world that has been dreamed of and planted and nourished for generations. It is blooming. Help us, help us to harvest this new caring world. You, you, you are part of telling queer history. You are part of LGBTQ history. Whether you identify as queer or as an ally, accomplice, you are here to hear and share and preserve our history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a friend of telling queer history. You belong here. Absolutely beautiful. I'm giving a virtual round of applause. You can hit your little reaction buttons or throw some applause or praise in the chat. Um, and now it is time for me to do some queer storytelling, for which point I will remove a little bit of my Elton John cosplay. Um, I actually will incorporate Elton John into the storytelling. <laughs> But I really appreciate spaces like telling queer history because there are too many spaces within our, our community that prioritize things like alcohol, uh, substance use, and that's not approachable for everyone. Um, you know, having a space that is alcohol free is not only inclusive in terms of religion, but also in inclusive in terms of how other people are keeping up with our mental health. I am a queer person of color, a black queer person who is Muslim, who also has alcohol use disorder. And coming to terms with that was very difficult for me because every space I would go to within the LGBTQ community was also open bar. Uh, sometimes it would be those open bars that were sponsoring the event, really profiting off of 
higher rates of alcoholism within our communities. And so to have a space like this is absolutely so sacred. And the reason why I'll include Elton John here is because uh, it was actually at an Elton John concert in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, where I connected in Minnesota or I connected in Minneapolis and then went straight up to Saskatoon. Um, and he was giving a, a talk about what it means to be sober. And I had a drink in my hand at that time and I decided that would be my last drink. Um, and I felt that it was so necessary, but also difficult to really name that. And I think that when it comes to naming ourselves, this is something that queer people are more familiar with than our straight or cisgender counterparts, because we have this reality of what it means to be ourselves, know who we are, and sometimes come to telling other people about who we are. So I want to talk to you about my coming out story and the whole concept of coming out, because coming out is not exclusively about sharing who we are with other people. Coming out is a beautiful process of self-discovery, self-definition, self-reflection, and hopefully self-acceptance. And if we are not yet at that point of self-acceptance, we hopefully can come to a point of self-respect because that comes first. And even in moments where we do not yet accept ourselves, we can understand ourselves. And I become so frustrated when I see coming out portrayed on TV, sometimes in a two-parter episode, as something that is one and done, either perfect or completely flawed, something that either sets you on a trajectory of self-actualization or something that makes you look inward and causes such distress of the self. But that's the thing, queer people, we know who we are. We might not have the language to articulate that to ourselves or even to others, but that's not what determines how validly and genuinely part of the LGBTQ plus community we are. As the letter Q becomes increasingly defined as queer, we also have to remember that questioning is still that important phase of determining how do I identify? When I was eight years old, I knew that I was not straight. And I knew that before I knew what straight was. I knew this because I stood on the playground and I realized I had a crush on this kid and his older sister. And I sat there convincing myself that it was because she was a tomboy. And surely I didn't have a crush on a girl. Was that even allowed? And I did know that Disney princesses didn't end up with Disney princesses. So clearly something was up. And it wasn't until I was about 15 that I could sit there and really say, okay, well, I know what straightness is, thanks to Grassy. I know what queerness is, also thanks to Grassy. <laughs> thanks, Tegan and Sarah. But I also knew, I didn't know what that meant for me. And so I, found, I had the word lesbian because that was a representation I saw. So I came out to my mother as a lesbian. And she swiftly said, no, 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 honey, you're bisexual. To which I was very upset because coming out, if someone ever comes out to you, don't steal their thunder and interject, one. But two, because I didn't know what that was. I didn't know the word bisexual. I had not conceptualized that as something that was an experience. So we went to GLAD back in 2008 and I looked at bisexual and while their definition was slightly outdated now we understand bisexuality as people forming attractions to a person of more than one gender instead of it being man and woman because that's a binary it resonated with me and I had a definition of self and something that is important to discuss when it comes to coming out in that process is remembering that whether or not we have that language to define ourselves is not what makes us valid. We are valid, we are here, we are queer. And whether or not we are even comfortable with the term queer, we are still part of this community. And that is something beautiful and something that cannot be taken away, but it's also not something that can be given. And so having spaces like telling queer history is so crucial because it is intergenerational, it is multicultural, multi-religious, a not religious, secular, people coming together to tell their truths. And I think adapting this to a virtual space is so crucial because when we meet people within our community, we are already so isolated from one another.
together, not because there's anything wrong with us, but because of that perpetual fear that at least I experienced of what if they find out something about me that I don't totally know yet about myself that they don't like. And it takes us remembering that it's not about whether or not we are deserving of love, but oftentimes whether or not the world creates space for us to be received and to be loved. And so telling queer history is one of those spaces, a space where we can say, I am deserving, I am worthy, I do not have to earn this, it is inherent. And for queer people that is so crucial because that is systematically denied to us. And it can't be shifted with policy change alone. It can't be shifted with, you know, us being welcomed into the world of heteronormativity or cisnormativity alone. It has to be something that is a shift in ethics, a shift in the way that we are understood. And until we get there, we will survive in those spaces, but we will fuel ourselves up with that energy, with that confidence, with that courage, with that support system and that support network with, with spaces like Telling Queer History. So I'm very pleased to be able to host today, but also to know that this space exists because that queer girl, me, in 2008, felt like if I didn't come out to my mother, I was living a lie. But that's not the truth. I know who I, I knew who I was. I wasn't hiding myself. I wasn't living a lie. I wasn't hiding my truth. I was surviving. I was being bullied. And my decision to come out to my mother was influenced by that false idea that if I didn't, I wasn't being myself. Who you are cannot be given and it cannot be taken away. And whether or not it is reflected within our shared spaces with other people is not always up to us but up to those around us to be people who operate on humanity and not operate on homophobic and transphobic oppression. So with that said, please donate to Telling Queer History because this work is absolutely so crucial. They've already done so well adapting this to a virtual space when we're already so isolated. So please do dig into your hearts and your wallets to support this organization. And so, uh, yes, as we have, the auction will close at 3 p.m. local time. All right, so let's take our journey to Venus de Mars, founder and leader of the trailblazing glam punk trans band, All the Pretty Horses, and her musical stylings, which will delight you, inspire you, and hopefully make you shimmy, make you dance. Without further ado, let's take it over to Venus. Hi. Uh, I don't know if I can get everybody dancing with an acoustic guitar. Um, I've got um, two songs. And uh, I'll just go with it. Take my hand, take my shoulder, I understand, I can hold you, I know you can, you're something bolder, there is no plan, and it's getting cold. Oh, my brother, see my sister, there are no others, there is no difference. 
could be you you could be me we struggle onwards desperately there's too much fear there's too much hardness there's too much here it's never farthest stop your hate stop your gun stop your fighting we are one hold me sister hold me hold me brother hold me hold me father hold me hold me mother hold me hold me sister hold me carry you we could be stronger we could be true make me wise make me breathe make me feel you make me grieve Okay, um, let me get the other song set up. Both of these I wrote um, a long time ago. Now, almost all of my songs are about being trans. Even when I started, I, I came out in 1988. Um, it was a different world back then. And I started, I, I started writing songs in 84 with my first album, and those were all about being trans too, but I was closeted back then. Um, so it was about that struggle. And then when I started The Horses in 90, the end of 93, everything was around that, but uh, it was a different time. One day you'll see Our lives are free And all will be I know you feel That life never heals
One day you'll know A light will show And cruel hearts go To rental love will crash above God work hard and left to rot. We'd breathe a breath, no more life or death. Absolutely amazing virtual and literal applause to Venus to Mars. Thank you so much for sharing your your space, your soul with us, um, musically, virtually, Thank beautifully. You. Thank you. And so that takes us into yet another amazing performer. Make sure, though, before I introduce our next performer, that you are going and you're checking this silent auction, there are some excellent, very Minnesota specific uh, gift cards, experiences, opportunities, a stay in a, a Wisconsin cabin. Uh, very reasonable, may, may, might I add. Looks delightful. You can see the entire interior if you just go click on that link. Um, and so while you're doing that, the auction closes in just 15 minutes. So make sure to take to participate and take advantage of that. Next up, we have Miko Blaze. And so Miko Blaze is a Minnesota karaoke king. Miko Blaze is the 2018 karaoke world champion and just an earth shattering musical and creative legend. If you enjoyed Venus, I know that you will enjoy Miko. Thank you again to Venus. And without further ado, let's have Miko Blaze light our hearts on fire. Thank you so much, Blair. Uh, thank you also for sharing your story earlier. I was in tears and I was like, I am really glad I did not choose to wear eyeliner today because it would have been dark. I was just, I resonated with that. So thank you for sharing that. 
Um, so yes, I'm Miko Blaze, uh, and I'm gonna sing a song for you um, that I wrote. It's off of my uh, album, He, Him, His. You can find it on all streaming platforms. It's called Good Enough. And um, it's meant to trick you into singing nice things about yourself if you feel inclined to sing along. <laughs> so uh, this is my song off my album, Good Enough. Wasted lots of moments thinking I wasn't worth it Putting myself down because of what others think How is it that I need to see the beauty in myself, yeah How is it that I need to see the beauty in myself I'm good enough, ooh, I'm good enough, ooh, yeah I'm good enough, ooh, yeah. I'm good enough. putting lies in my head you know I'm different I'm not like everyone else they didn't even see the beauty I see in myself they didn't even see the beauty I see in myself I'm good in love Thank you so much. That was good enough off of my album. Uh, I hope that it brought you some happiness. And you know, if you want to sing this out loud to yourself, which I really encourage when you're having a bad day, feel free to check it out. It's on all streaming platforms. Um, so, you know, talking about this past year, um, there has been a lot of challenges, wouldn't you say? A lot of things that have happened. And I just want to take a moment to kind of talk about uh, the importance of uh, TQH. So as I said, 2020 has been very challenging for all of us. Um, and TQH has been focused on building a foundation of our organization, thanks to donors, resources, and communities that we have developed over the past eight years. Your financial contribution is going to go directly to people like me and Blair, who make telling queer history possible. Um, moving forward, we're going to be working towards building an organization that can continue to grow Oh, just lost my spot. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry about that. So we're gonna be working towards building an organization that can continue to grow and support our staff, nurture relationships with our diverse group of storytellers and artists and strengthen connections with our community partners and other organizations. Telling Queer History offers a unique venue for LGBTQ plus people in the Twin Cities and beyond. During the pandemic, we have lost so many queer spaces and events and TQH has been able to grow and reach new audiences. Queer people need places to be seen, heard, and to listen to stories from their community. So please give a thumbs up. Let's see, I want, this is a participation. Uh, so let's see those thumbs up if, you, um, if you're a sustaining donor. 
um, and if you're able to increase your donation today. So I'm going to check it out. So if you can put those thumbs up. And then also, if you pay for Netflix subscriptions, if you pay for any type of subscription, there is an opportunity for you to donate on a monthly basis. Um, so who's going to be the first one to donate today? How about this? I volunteer. I will commit to $10 a month. Uh, because I believe in this, I believe in the importance, and I'm wondering if there's anybody out there who's going to join me in committing to doing $10, and if you can do more, there is an opportunity that you could do $30 a month, um, and you would be sustaining uh, a donation, and it would work much like a subscription. Uh, you're subscribing to queer content from lived experience within our own communities, um, and you know, if you're able to do more, can you do a one-time donation of $50 or maybe $25? No amount is too small. If you believe in the space and you believe in creating community, uh, this is a great way to sustain that. So if you really like what we're doing here and like what we're creating, help us continue that by becoming a sustaining donor. Just the same way you pay for Netflix, you can now pay for queer history on a monthly basis to make sure that it continues to function and work. And I'm down for that. I'm all about queer content. So be sure to do that. All right. So I'm actually gonna call on somebody here to participate here. This is a audience participation. And someone who's actually really dear to my heart. They've been very supportive about my career. Um, I'm gonna bring up Michael Pennington up here and I want her to speak about of why they support uh, the telling queer history. So give it up everyone for Michael. Thank you. Oh my goodness, I've been so touched. Uh, you guys can hear me, right? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I've been so touched by everybody um, today. This is, the music has been amazing. My palms are all sweaty. Um, so thank you so much for doing that. Um, Blair, for telling your story. Um, I believe the power and strength of storytelling. It has changed my life. Um, and telling queer history <laughs> does, wraps two of my favorite things that I love, queer people and storytelling. <laughs> so each month um, I have, am a sustaining member and I don't have to think about it. It's, it's just, it, it just happens to come um, uh, right out of um, my uh, bank account, credit card. Um, but it's something that I truly believe in. And I know that uh, with as we continue to tell stories, we change people, we change ourselves. Um, being able to tell a story is how I found um, my connection to my queerness. And I, am, I feel like uh, TQH is a community that I can come to each month. So please consider donating. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that. And I completely agree. I myself also really love queer people and I love hearing their stories. Uh, so if you wanna continue that, like Michael said, donate, please donate. Please help make this space uh, continue to be possible. I believe there is a donation slide at some point. Is that just checking in to make sure that's a thing? All right. So yes, if you wanna make a donation, here's the quick and uh, easy way to do it. Just go ahead and scan that QR code and make a donation. Um, and here it's uh, setting up our goal. Our goal is to raise $10,000. Uh, so if you're able to kind of help chip away at that amount, we're gonna be internally grateful for that, but also you're helping continue to create space for queer folks just like us to be able to have community. And don't forget, just like we do have the option, if you're someone that can commit to donating $10 a month or $30 a month, that is an option. I'm actually going to do the $10 a month. I'm gonna to commit to that with y'all. Uh, I pay for Netflix and I wanna pay for queer content. And I love that by donating, I'm, this is directly going right into my community and into people that, whose voices I want uplifted. Uh, so if you're down with that, go ahead and donate. Looks like we've got some links here in the chat with that. Yep, looks like. Also, feel free to share share and tell your friends. There's folks who can't come today, uh, but that doesn't mean that you, they can't participate and donate. 
Um, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of these will be recorded. So in the future, that's something that they can come back and watch um, and listen to the stories that have been told here. So like I said, if you wanna continue to sustain that, please share the links, also donate. Um, and also if you wanna get some cool stuff and donate, check out the auction. I believe it's gonna be closing shortly here. And I, I am on there if you want me to sing you a song. I'm even willing to COVID provided and locally, if you would like me to sing a song or two in person for a wedding or something, you know, do it. That's, that's what I do. I, they've taken care of me and this is my way to give back to something I believe in. Uh, so put in those vids. I believe we got like five more minutes left. Uh, so please, please, please uh, donate. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and sing y'all another song. How's that sound? Yes. Perfect. And before Miko does that, please do remember to uh, send a direct message to Jen if you will need uh, ASL interpretation for our breakout sessions, which are coming up in just a little bit. Go ahead, Miko. Thank you. I'm just going to get set up here. I think I'm still sharing my sound. Is that all right? Cool. Perfect. All right. So this next song I'm going to sing to you, I did not write it. Uh, Andra Day did. Give her her credit where it's due. She's amazing. Uh, but this song resonates with me for so many reasons. Uh, being a trans, Latinx, uh, queer person in America, uh, this has resonated with me. And also being a community member of uh, the Seward, South Minneapolis area. Um, I love this song because I just think sometimes we just really need to hear it when there's a lot of stuff that we can't control outside of this. So I'm going to sing for you uh, Rise Up by Ander Day. I hope you enjoy. I'm just going to make sure my sound's working. Give me one moment. Sorry. All right, there we go. Give me one moment, I'm sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties real quick. <laughs> We're live. Maybe this is a good moment for me to jump in and say that we have more than double raised our goal. So we've reached over $21,000 collectively. So that's amazing. That's basically our budget for the last eight years. Wow. <laughs> um, so I'm really amazed and grateful for all this. Um, we tried a lot of new things this year and um, so grateful for all your support. So, yeah. Wow, that, that makes me so happy to hear. Thank you, wow. Congratulations, yeah, yeah. great job, everybody. All right, well, you know what? I'm gonna sing this song like I wrote it. So let's celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thank here you we go. go. <laughs> You're broken down and tired. Living life on a merry go and you can't find the fighter. I see it in you, so we go walk it out and move the mountain. We go walk it out and move the mountains. And I rise up, I rise like the day. Silence isn't 
quiet and it feels like it's getting hard to breathe and i know you feel like dying but i promise we'll bring the world to its feet Move. Bring it to its feet and move. And our eyes, our eyes like a tear. Our eyes in a prayer. Do it a thousand times. Thank you so much, everybody. I am Miko Blaze. Uh, please feel free to check out my album. It's available on all streaming, he, him, his. Um, and check me out. I'm in the Twin Cities, Hot Pink. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Miko. While you were serenading us with that beautifully uplifting song, we not only, as uh, RJ mentioned, met and exceeded our goal, but raised $5,937. I don't know math very well, but somebody find that difference and get it us get us up to 6K using our giving link. Um, thank you all so much for your contributions. This is absolutely just so exciting. Uh, and so if you enter the auction, you'll be contacted by Telling Queer History and will receive instructions about how to get your items, whether it is a virtual experience or a physical one. And so we have our thank yous uh, and uh, let's see, Pat will ask the audience to read a list of contributors and thank them for our contributions. Let's go ahead and do that. Thank you so much, Pat. And Pat, you stole my joke earlier. I love to make jokes about being a ham, but not eating pork. And you did that before I could get a chance to, but it's okay. <laughs> I Megan? do, I do, I do apologize for that. But <laughs> But, you know, being a sister, you get it. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you, Blair, for being the absolute utmost host. Host with the most. I love that hat. You know, probably Sir Elton and I will have to be talking about that shortly. <laughs> so just waiting so that everybody can see the thank yous because uh, as Blair and RJ said, we have a lot of thank yous. No one can do it alone, even though it's said to do it yourself, but don't do it alone. And we cannot do it alone. And as you can see now, it is gratitude from all of us to all our supporters here and everywhere. 
It is, is beautiful. You can take a look and see how many people supported us. And we got more supporters today, yay! And it'll just grow and it will need to grow because I started out as a storyteller myself in terms of telling career history and I wound up here on the board and it's just been an amazing experience uh, from all the ways and from seeing everybody here, both names on screen and also seeing faces, it is absolutely a wonderful organization to support. So personally for me, thank you. Uh, from the board, thank you. Uh, from everybody, thank you. Blair? Thank you so much. Alrighty, so thank you to everyone who contributed. It's not too late. Uh, even if you were just so enthralled with the musical stylings today and you didn't have a chance to go find your wallet, I can relate. You can still give and those links will be available. But now we're going to get started on Fast Friends, which is a core part of telling queer history, is connecting people. So there's going to be an introvert friendly get to know you. That's important. I myself am an extreme extrovert, but introverts matter too. So telling queer history is about getting vulnerable and building community, vulnerable to the extent you feel comfortable doing so. Um, so we'll have a, a chance to connect. I think on screen there will be instructions. Yes. Uh, and you'll be able to go through this. We'll have breakout groups. Make sure to DM Jen if you require ASL interpretation during the different breakout groups. I'll be in one of the groups. Maybe I'll float around. You'll see me as well. Um, and so you have 20 minutes to meet your new friends. If you end up in the same breakout group as your ex, for example, and that's awkward, you can just join back to the, the, to the original group and we'll put you in a new one. And if you don't want to partic participate, you can opt out of the Zoom activity uh, since this is our final activity. And so we'll be in a random breakout group of four to five people. No pressure. Don't worry. We have prompts to guide you. Uh, and we'll start with the person with the shortest head hair. It won't be me because I don't get y'all don't get to know that. <laughs> so you'll start by going around saying your name, pronoun and where you're joining us from. Uh, and we'll go ahead and do those breakout groups now. Thank you all so much for being here. And thank you to our ASL interpreters and everyone who made this possible. Hey, Jen, I didn't get a notification to join a room. That's <laughs> weird. I know. Um, yeah, you're supposed to be in room nine. No, that's I RJ. Mean, Hold on. Where are no, you? No, I don't know where I am. I don't, I, I don't know, but I can go be somewhere. <laughs> I will put you in. I wonder if it's because you're the main host. Oh, oh yeah. Can I, I still so should you, be. You should be able to hit the breakout rooms at the bottom, hit the, go to the more and hit the breakout room and you should be able to join any of those rooms. Okay. I'll put my, myself in. Looks like room, room two. Well, David's in there. I can go in four or I'll go in six. Six uh, doesn't have a board member. Sounds good. How do I put myself in there now? Uh, if you click the breakout, it should be a join on that top line? Uh, I don't see that. I see broadcast message and close all rooms. Does that just mean I don't huh. get to go in a room? 
Maybe no. not. It should be in. Well, I think if you see. hover over the number, if there's a number next I'll... to the room. Thanks, Jason. I'll see if I can try that. Oh, there. I see it. Thank you. Oh, good. Totally. That's... But I'm. See... I'm in the same boat. I'd be happy to join one. <laughs> I just noticed that you were not assigned to something, so I will assign you to one. Great, thank you. I'll put you in room seven. May I ask a request? Here's yes. Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Will you put her in room two with me? I will, if I can find you both. <laughs> I don't, can I go back to my room? I can. Um. Let me just find, so I got Beth and Elizabeth. Do you know what room you happen to have been in? I was in, I, I'm in two. I think I'm still okay. assigned. I just, yep, that out. just makes it easier for me to find you. That's all. Yeah. Uh, so let me just keep you in two and let me put Elizabeth, I can move Elizabeth into two. There you go. You should both be in two now. All right, sweet. Okay. See you in there, Elizabeth.
Looks like we are all back now. Clap your hands. Hello, hello everyone, we are back. Um, I just want to give everyone the utmost gratitude. Thank you for participating in the Fast Friends activity. I also want to announce, uh, I hope that RJ intended for me to announce that Tegan and Sarah Foundation has also provided a grant um, that will be going into the reserves now that there is so much resource to be able to sustain, to sustain the work of telling queer history and so many people who've been able to connect with one another. This is just yet another investment in this important work uh, that comes from an intersection of place and is so necessary. Um, so thank you all so much and I think I'll pass it off to Rebecca A. All right, that's me. Let me uh, spotlight myself so you can all see me. Um, thank you so much for being here today, everyone. Uh, I really enjoyed this time with you and I feel really grateful for all of your support and all of you showing up for us today. That feels really good to me. Um, there is a link in the chat to our giving link if you still haven't gotten to donate and you want to. I also wanted to give you a heads up that our next gathering will be our eighth anniversary event, eight years this June. Um, we'll be celebrating that on June 13th. It'll be another Zoom event, so join us here. Um, you can also stay connected with us via our podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and email list. Um, all of that, you should get an email after this thanking you um, so you can connect with us through that email or finding us anywhere on social media at Telling Queer History. Jen just pasted our website into the chat so you can click there and find all our social media links as well. Also one last plug, if anyone is interested in joining our board, um, we are looking actively for new board members. We're especially looking for folks who have an interest in development or fundraising um, as well as accounting money management type things and um, social media. So if that interests any of you, or if you have other skills you'd like to join us um, and contribute, you can email us for more information about our board at hello at tellingqueerhistory.com. I also wanna give a big shout out to Blair, our MC, Venus Amico, our artists, and Alex and Amber, our interpreters. Um, we can't do any of these things without all of you and the great participants we had here today. So with that, I wanna just express my gratitude Thank you all for your contributions today. And I hope to see you on June 13th and please tell your friends to join us as well. All right, have a great afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Bye-bye.